Hello. Well, hello, hello, hello. You are listening to the No Brainers Empowering Possibilities show. This is dialogues of encouragement with fresh perspectives, invitations to ahas, a little bit of science, a dash of behavioral psychology, and a whole lot of creative fun. So if leveling up is on your radar, my friend, you are at the right show. I'm your host, Roseanne Marsh, author of the teen and parent empowerment curriculum called Level Up. And you are listening to episode number 41, Quiet Quitting. What do you make of this new trend? When the term quiet quitting came across my view a couple weeks ago via social media, I, I have to say I had kind of chills up and down my spine thinking about the many years that I was a supervisor and the craziness or the challenges of keeping good people. And when I heard quiet quitting, I thought, oh my gosh, does this mean that people are quitting in droves and just quietly going away? But to my surprise, it has a much different connotation. And one that's interesting, maybe even a little irritating at some points, provocative and informative, but I know it has a lot of different meanings, several different meanings. So, so this phrase has literally taken TikTok by storm with millions and millions of views as young professionals are rejecting the idea of going above and beyond in their careers. And they're labeling doing the minimum that is expected to just get by in their work instead of quitting. And it isn't about getting off the company's payroll. It's like being under the radar enough that you can focus on what is the minimum of your job description and still stay there. A number of weeks ago, a 24-year-old engineer in New York posted a quiet quitting video where he coined that phrase. And he racked up 3 million video likes in a short period of time. And he explained that the concept is that in this video, he explained that the concept is to get away from the hustle cultural mentality and that life doesn't have to be your work and that his peers were rejecting the idea that productivity is all it's worked up to be. And they really didn't see the payoff when they went above and beyond. But there seems to be several different versions of this. And I want to pull out a couple of these in case this is an unfamiliar term to you and kind of a new phenomena. One of the things they're saying is work your wage. In other words, if you're getting minimum wage, then you should do minimum work. Now, it's interesting that this comes after the great resignation, they call it, when COVID hit. And it really was more advantageous for people to literally stay home and get the government to pay them money instead of going back and doing their job. And then there's that confusion when a lot of people are having to work from home via whatever vehicle that is from their computers. And there's that blurred line of what's home time and what's work time. So as I've dissected the information that I've been able to find and listen to interviews and some of the crazy TikTok satire that's out there that's happening, I really can see that there's kind of two trains of thoughts that are happening. One is only work according to that which you are being paid. Stick to that job description and do no more. And the other one is kind of a current conversation that's brought up on how do you protect your private life, your family life? And are there companies out there that have expectations that you have to go above and beyond and weekend meetings and after work time at the bar or sign up for extra projects, but yet there's no extra monetary compensation or time off in lieu of that time that you've committed. Quiet quitting is where you reject the hustle culture and going above and beyond. And essentially you check out of your job and do just enough to prevent burnout. But as I looked at this, I don't know but that's going to stop burnout. Because if you look at the science behind thriving, we need to be engaged and we need to be challenged in the right way. 
and the right amount. And to be happy at work, we need engagement. And if, but in fact, we can be underengaged and we can be just as unhappy and unfulfilled. So there's a decision. You know, we all know about the Gallup polls and they started researching those who feel engaged in their work and those who don't. And they, there was no surprise, especially with the work ethic or work definition, I should probably say, that there are many that did not feel engaged in their work. In fact, only 31% said they felt engaged. So one of the questions that they asked Gallup poll, they said, do you feel like your work has purpose? The younger employees reported they don't feel that way at all. And the data shows it. And these are the people who are more likely to work possibly to look out for themselves rather than their employers. So what do you think? Do you think quiet quitting is the answer to stop you from getting burnout? Josh Bittinger is a 32-year-old market research director at a management consulting company. And he said, you know what? There's a lot of criticism of quiet quitting. And there's a misconception that it encourages you to be lazy when in actuality, it's reminding us not to work to the point of burnout. He said he learned that a while ago when he started preserving his weekends for himself, not picking up email, preserving his weeknights so that he could have family time. He said, I get my job done. My projects are done. I'm performing well. I get great feedback. He says, but now I'm just able to step away from the job and have a private life. But is this really a new phenomena? I don't think so. People have coasted in their jobs for decades, but many of the less invested, less engaged employees now basically have it a lot easier because with the employment a little bit tougher, there's employers that are having to kind of look away just to preserve the amount of employees that they need to keep their business open. One journalist said, quiet quitting is silent withdrawal from the overbearing pressure of work. And this is healthy for your mind, your body, and your soul. And with more and more people facing burnout, the conversation around wellness and health has had to come to the forefront. And quiet quitting is a worldwide individual response to the same. So as you heard that, what emotions came up for you? What kind of thoughts were coming to you? Do you agree or do you disagree? As an employee, is that the approach that you take to your job? As an employer, is that something you would be able to pick out and say, oh, that associate is quiet quitting and that one is quiet quitting? Well, there are many companies out there that are quite vocally articulating their feelings around quiet quitting. Okay, Shark Tank. I know most of you have seen this. Kevin O'Leary on that, ABC's Shark Tank, where he's not only a investor, but he's, he's one of the stars. He said, I think quiet quitting is a really bad idea because he says people that go beyond to try to solve problems for an organization, for their teams, their managers, their bosses, those are the ones that exceed in life. So by what we do, the actions we have can be a predictor of who we can become. Would it not seem logical? So the quiet quitting removes that emotional investment that you have with your job, which is sad given the fact that we work a lot of hours on our job. Be nice if we were emotionally invested with it. And it'd be great if we all had that job that we were uber passionate about. It's so excited to get out of our bed. But the truth of the matter, when we get into working, there are going to be those jobs that we don't love. There's going to have to be those things that we're going to have to push through to be able to get that paycheck. But here's a question. When did we stop being grateful for work? When did we stop being grateful for a paycheck? And I know I'm, I'm addressing two different things. There's those that want to preserve family time and have a better balance of life. And there are those that are saying, I'm just not going to put in as much. I'm going to skate under the radar and I'm just going to do the bare minimum. 
as a district manager for a clothing company for over 20 years, I hired the staff for between 16 and 20 stores at any given time. And I remember when I first got in, I could not believe the turnover that was happening in this company. It was like crazy. People were quitting all the time. And high turnover is really costly to a company. It's expensive when you train people and then they leave. And then you have to start over with a newbie that doesn't know much and you train them up. So the goal is to be able to have great retention. Well, I remember trying to motivate people <laughs> and as a new supervisor. I made so many mistakes. Anyone else here ever made mistakes? I was learning, but I was so driven to be able to understand the feature of this creature that I went back and did deep dives into behavioral psychology. And I found three things that I thought could really make a difference in our jobs, really a difference in the turnover that we were experiencing. So I went to my managers and I just feel so grateful that I was able to rub shoulders with these amazing people. And together we focused on three things. Those three things were people need to feel heard. People need to feel appreciated and they need to feel confident and empowered by having skills so that they can do their job. So they needed to feel heard, appreciated, and have the skills. So the managers went to work and they started by asking advice of even like the teens, the part-timers. And as they taught them a little bit about the dynamics of marketing and strategic location, they became more involved. At first they thought it was a trap, like, oh, wait, are they trying to see how much we don't know? I don't know if I want to answer. But then as they saw that it was sincerity, like, hey, let's brainstorm together they really started coming up with some creative ideas and became more engaged with their jobs. And then the managers started thanking them for things appropriately. And you think, why do we have to thank them? You know, they're being paid, that's their job. But as they, at the end of the night, would thank them for the job they had done, it started making a difference. And then when we added on that, some skill sets, oh, wow. We took the training to a next level. We had a training program in the company, but we made it more experiential. We made it more fun and memorable. I even remember a night when I had them all write a couple different words on their hand, and then we took them through the selling process. And it was these golden words that literally took their sales ability to the next level. And it was crazy amazing because we didn't pay them more. We couldn't afford to pay them more. We were like the middle of the pay scale. And there are other people out there, other retailers out there that could absolutely pay them more. But what we found out is because they felt heard and appreciated and were given skills, they were staying. And we had some of the lowest turn in the company. It was so exciting. But another thing I remember about going into colleges to recruit for managers. And a lot of them were graduating and didn't have a lot of job experience, but they had a college degree. But it's interesting when I'd ask them, so how long do you intend to stay with the company? And this is what their response was. Well, I'm thinking two or three years, I want to get trained. I want to get as many skills as I can. Then I want to move on to my next company and learn and glean what I can from that company and go on. I mean, they were very overt about saying that. Can I tell you when you're trying to hire somebody, it was kind of like, oh my gosh, red flag. This person isn't going to stay with us very long. But there were also those that I hired and they did leave. But invariably, they came back and said, hey, if an opening comes up, I would love to come back. And probably because they felt heard, appreciated, and had been given the skills. Pretty exciting when we're engaged. As I listened to a lot of the data around the quiet quitting, and it said 50% of the job workforce were adopting this kind of flavor. It just made me heart sick to think that Americans were dialing down. But then on another hand, it made me think how savvy are those that are saying, 
I need to set some healthier boundaries to be able to have free time and time with my family and time with the, for those things that I love and enjoy. Those are difficult conversations to have with our, our employers to you now say, you know what? I've been doing this all along, but now I need to dial back a little bit. But isn't that healthier to have those conversations to see how can we make those modifications so that I can join my family more or enjoy my private time in lieu of just dialing down. Now, quiet quitting could be a positive trend if workers were focused on maximizing their hours in the office. But right now, that's not the trend. And this trend of dialing down could end up in lack of motivation, underdevelopment of their skills, lack of flexibility, the inability to work as a team setting, and quiet quitting could cause conflict between employees because some would feel like they're carrying the weight. Paul Ferrer, who's the founder of Aspire, said, there's a risk attached to taking this approach to your career. Because inevitably, your progression within a company will become limited, particularly if your colleagues are going above and beyond and you stopped. And then you also run the risk of having very little to show to your next employer when you're interviewing for your next role. And if things get tough, the economy gets tough, those that are quiet quitting are the ones that will be released and not have jobs. Now, retail is something that I understand. And one thing I do know is that whenever you're working with customers, there has to be a level of flexibility, right? And can you imagine a line of people waiting to be checked out or waiting to be serviced? And someone looks at their clock and says, oh, it's five o'clock. I'm off the clock. Shuts down the cash register and walks away. We don't work for free. We're actually being given something. And I think there needs to be loyal to the company and there needs to be flexibility. I want you to imagine for a moment that you own a company and its profits and survival depend on one, the sales of your goods, but it's also going to be determined by the quality of the workers, the employees, the associates that you have. A good, great product can sell really poorly if associates are quite frankly doing the bare minimum. Where do we draw the line between adequate and what's right. Most jobs demand that there be some flexibility. My own personal company that I have right now, I don't want somebody who's going to give me minimum. I want someone who is engaged and excited and coming up with ideas all the time. I want to give you an example of two of my friends and how they handle their work. My first friend was off a management job and she works from nine to two in an office. And then she goes on to another part-time job. She was given the job description of what she needed to do, and she went to work. But she could see that there were other needs that weren't being made. And one was that there just didn't seem to be a connection between everyone working there. There wasn't like a sense of community. They weren't associating. So she pulled together this fun luncheon one day, pulled together all the picnic tables out on the grass, had fun games, had wonderful food for everybody. Some of them didn't even know the names of the person that was working in the cubicle right down the hall from them. It was so interesting because there started to be more energy there. Then she started cleaning things up a little bit and she had a bulletin board of a get to know you and fun little facts about the person. But she didn't quit there. Then it was different forms that she was making to simplify and organize. But you know what? That's who she is. She just didn't get the job and do bare minimum, hold back. She brought her genius to the job. Not only did it make everything better for everybody, but she loves her job because she loves going there and seeing what other things she can do to make things easier, simpler, more profitable, etc. The associates are now talking to each other. There is a different flavor to the work because she brought her genius. Now, the boss was always saying, the owner of this company is like, I don't know what we do without you. I don't know where you came from, but please never leave us. We absolutely love you. And then one day he came and had an interesting conversation with her. He said, you know, on the weekends, a couple of times a month, we like to do these little conferences where we take a table and banners and things to introduce everybody to our company. And I'd like you to be the face of the company and go do those. 
And she smiled and she sank to me and said, well, you know, that doesn't work for me. I agreed on a set number of hours. And I'm a single mom and I have boys at home still. I have groceries and cleaning and meals and I need a day off. So I'm going to have to politely decline. Now that can be risky at times, right? <laughs> to say no to your boss, but she brings her genius when she's there. Now, let me give you an example of another friend, Jennifer. I call her the game changer because anywhere she goes, she changes the game in a good way. Any company that she works for, she, she finds something that can help their profitability or make it more understandable for, for the associates or improve the training. She's that common sense, analytical, wherever she goes, she up levels how the company runs things. And sometimes she's compensated for it. A lot of times she's given an award and sometimes that company smiles all the way to the bank because of some ideas that she has come up with. But that's her genius. And she doesn't hold back because she's making one wage over another. Let me just give you another example of what she did in her mall. There's a little coffee shop. And between 9.30 and 10 a.m. in the morning, that's when all the managers are getting there. They're getting ready to open their stores. And they go to this little coffee shop and they get their coffee and their drinks and their pastries and their goodies. But every morning, there's one person who is vacuuming the carpet and there's another one that's hustling to try to get all these drinks of the mall associates. Which just says, we sit in line and line and a lot of us have to leave because the line's too long and we have to get back to our stores. And so one day she went down and was getting a soda and she caught the eye of the manager. She said, hey, can I share something with you? She says, I'm not sure you're aware that every morning, all this staff from the mall come to purchase goods from your coffee shop. And there's a long line. You've got one vacuuming and you've got one servicing everyone. You're leaving money on the table. Why don't you just have them vacuum at night and have two of them behind the register and you're going to get twice the money before you even open up to the public at 10 a.m.? And his eyes got bright as he caught the vision of what she had to say. Now, if I had a big company, Jennifer's the one that I want to hire. She's the one who sees where the better mousetrap can be developed. And I want the associate who says, I was thinking about marketing last night and I've got these ideas. So I think the way to keep ourselves excited about our jobs is to bring our genius. It's not about hiding it. When our, our jobs don't work, or we're overworked or burned out. My hope is for all you employers out there is that you'll be open for some critical conversations so that you can be the company that everyone wants to work for, but bring their genius. And the truth is, anytime we show up fully engaged <laughs> and give them ourselves, when we give that gift of the labor that we do, and we do it with commitment and with heart. That's what brings meaning and fulfillment. And maybe not every job you're involved with fully will let you express your passions or your gifts. But you know there's a portion of your genius that can be brought out. The uniqueness of you. Now really is a time for us to define ourselves in this time of resignation and apathy. My question is, is quiet quitting something that you do on your job? And if you do it on your job, is quiet quitting something that you do on your relationships? Is quiet quitting something that you do with your family? And you may say, no, 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 I love my family. I love my relationships. I love my, my hobbies. But how do you differentiate? How do you give minimum and not have it leak over into your, the rest of your life? What if instead of dialing down, we were to dial up our genius? We have to spend time working. So what if it became more? And I don't mean longer hours. I'm saying within the time frame we're there, what if we became more? What if we learned more? What if we developed more, if we dialed up our genius at work? Who could we be if instead of giving into complacency, we gave more? You know, the old Boy Scout motto, 
leave a place better than you found it. Okay, now isn't that the Americana motto? And what if that's how you did your job? What if you left a signature of who you are on everything that you were involved with? With all the conversation out there about quiet quitting, isn't it worth considering an alternative perspective? So my invitation to you this week is to think about how your genius, how your personality, how the signature of who you are could be brought into your workplace. And it's not about trying to compete or outshine anyone else. It's about allowing you to come forward instead of dialing down and becoming complacent. This week, let's give a little bit more when we feel resistance. Let's give a little bit more instead of shutting down and let's see what happens. I'm willing to bet that you're going to find another level within yourself. How do you feel about quiet quitting? It's worth having a conversation with your family, with your friends, maybe even with your colleagues. And when you're engaged and when you're excited and when you're motivated, even if it's in just those defined hours so that you do have work balance, with your private time. And I hope that if you have a company, I hope you can find an employee that brings their genius just like you do. We create our life with our thoughts, our feelings, and our actions. And the signature that we leave on everything that we do. Have an amazing week. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.